Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is at Huawei. I'm working on Huawei's public cloud. My interest areas are in uh, container tech and edge cloud. Hello, everyone. My name is Dinesh Govindasamy. I'm a dev manager in uh, Windows Core OS networking group. I lead the charter for Windows container networking. So today, Dinesh and I are going to use a real story to help you understand the Windows container network in Kubernetes. In the next 35 minutes, we're going to talk about Windows Container architecture, walk through Windows Container network in a Kubernetes cluster, then from a cloud provider's perspective, help explain what is CI plugin and how to write one. Last but not least, we are going to demo Huawei Windows Container Service collect some network tracing, and uh, troubleshoot some issues. With it, uh, we hope you have a better understanding of Windows Container Network. Uh, what is CNI? Be able to write a CNI plugin and play with it. So Dinesh, uh, Huawei wants to enable Windows Container Cluster. Can you help us understand more about the Windows Container Kernel? Sure. Sure, Sandra. In this session of the presentation, we are going to be looking at the high-level architecture of uh, Kubernetes for Windows, um, the, net, the building blocks of the Windows container networking, and uh, um, the Kubernetes network connectivity and how it works for Windows. The Windows operating system has two main uh, inbox services, the host compute service and host network service, that provide the required container functionality. The host compute service is responsible for providing the compute-related functionality, such as job object creation and management, and general lifecycle management of containers. The host network service is responsible for the network management, uh, and uh, related to namespace management, endpoint management, uh, network policy, and uh, service load balancing related functionality. The HCS shim is a Go wrapper for both of these services, and Kubelet, Qproxy, and all different CNI plugins use this HCS shim to program these HNS and HCS. In this presentation, we are going to be looking at the CNI plugin interfaces and how, uh, how, it, how it is implemented in Windows. So let's take a look at the container networking basics. There are a set of Linux um, uh, fundamental networking building blocks that Kubernetes architecture is built upon. Let's look at them and how they compare with Windows and how we have developed the Windows networking drivers. The network namespace. In Windows, the network namespace is network compartments. The compartments are logical container in the TCP IP stack, and the network layer or the NL layer in the TCP IP stack is uh, making sure that each compartment is isolated and packet forwarding between the compartments is prevented. All IP related objects such as IP addresses, IP prefixes, routes, everything stay for that unique to that compartment. In Linux, the layer 2 switching and layer 3 functionality is provided by Linux bridge and the IP routing. In Windows, a v2, uh, uh, a v switch provides the layer 2 switching and layer 3 functionality. You can have many instances of vSwitch. If you're familiar with open vSwitch, it's very analogous to that of Windows. And you can dynamically add and remove switch ports to this vSwitch. And each instance of a vSwitch has its own forwarding table and forwards packets based on the MAC address and the VLAN tagging of the packets. IP links. The container network interfaces, it could be host VNICs or VMNICs that are added to the na network namespace and then bound to the corresponding switch port in the vSwitch. IPVS and IP table provide rich packet filtering mechanism in Linux, whereas in Windows, Windows Firewall and v VFP provides you the similar packet, fun packet filtering functionality. VFP is a virtual filtering platform. It's a programmable match action based filtering engine that helps you to apply uh, 
primitive, like very rich data, primi data plane primitives such as um, ACLing, metering, um, natting, load balancing, and uh, NCAP, DCAP, and much more. VFP is the same data plane that is used to power Microsoft Azure and Azure Stack. And we are bringing the same data plane, basically reusing the same data plane and providing you the uh, Windows networking functionality. We'll be looking at VFP in detail in the uh, next few slides. So let's put all of this together and look at the internals of uh, Windows container networking. Let's take a look at how bare metal networking works in Windows, right? So you have a physical host and you have a physical NIC connected to this host and the physical NIC has an IP and a MAC. By default, this physical NIC is exposed to the uh, default root namespace of the host and host uses this to uh, communicate to the external world. Let's say you are adding a virtual network to this host. A new instance of virtual switch is created on the host and the switch is bound to this physical NIC now for the host, we are creating a new virtual NIC and then attach it to the root namespace and then bind it to the corresponding switch port on the switch. The IP and the MAC that was in the physical NIC is now moved to this virtual NIC. Uh, for adding a container namespace is just creating a, con a compartment in the host. Now adding a container endpoint is basically adding a new virtual NIC to this namespace and then binding it to the corresponding uh, switch port in the vSwitch. The container has its own IP in the MAC. The NAT and load balancing functionality is provided by basically using the VFP rules. The VFP rules are present in for container port, the management port, and the external port. Combining all of this, we'll be able to sh shape the diff traffic however we want, and we provide the NAT and load balancer functionality. Let's take a look at the virtual filtering platform. So the, that is the brain behind the entire container networking that we are providing, right? So uh, virtual filtering platform is an extension added to the vSwitch. So any traffic that's flowing through the vSwitch will also flow through the VFP. And the VFP, can, the rules can be applied both on the inbound and the outbound direction of the packet. So this, on the right side, is an a, a example of a VFP rule. So VFP has different layers. The layers can be, again, ACLing, metering, VNet, SLB. Each layer has different groups. And the groups are um, in-direction, out-direction, or IPv4, IPv6, or it could be user-defined. And then inside the group, you have a, a rule. Again, remember I said that the VFP is a match-action-based uh, rich packet filtering engine, right? So the rule is having a filtering condition, and you can filter based on the IP addresses, the source or destination IP address or protocol, and then filter that particular packet, and then you can apply an action on that packet. And the action can be um, encapping, decapping, or LBNAT, or any such action. So it's, it's very rich, right? Now HNS is basically providing the controller plane, and VFP is providing you the data plane. HNL, HNS programs the corresponding rules into VFP and then shapes the traffic however we want. I, I hope I gave you enough uh, uh, information about the Windows container uh, networking, how it works in both control plane and uh, data plane. Now, I'm going to put all of this together and walk you through some examples of how Kubernetes network connectivity works for Windows. I'm going to go over three examples. The first example is pod-to-pod uh, -pod connectivity. Let's say you have two pods in this host, pod1 and pod2, and pod1 wants to communicate to pod2. Right. One of the Kubernetes requirement is that pod-to-pod -pod connectivity should not be NATed. Right. Basically, it has to be provided through an L3 connectivity. So the, pa the packet reaches the port, port 3 of the uh, VFP. Right. There are a bunch of VFP rules. So by default in Kubernetes, we apply an outbound NAT rule. So what it means is every traffic coming out of that container will be NATed. But we, we have some special exceptions uh, where you can apply some exceptions rules in VFP and say that I don't want to NAT this, this set of traffics. So there are some, some pod sitter, uh, the service sitter, are, th are those exceptions where we apply on the VFP so that we, can, we don't need to NAT them, right? So the packets will not be natted. 
and it will get forwarded to the forwarding plane. VFP has its own routing table. Based on the destination IP, it looks up the destination MAC and forwards the packet to the corresponding destination port and the packet reaches the uh, destination pod. Now let's take a look at the second example I'm going to talk about is a uh, pod trying to reach an internet traffic. So the, by, uh, by default, as I said earlier, uh, every traffic coming out of the pod will be basically outbound natted, right? So the packet, the pod one is trying to reach internet, the packets reach port 3, no actual supply. So it goes, to, it goes and hits the SNAT layer and SNAT will be applied on that packet. So SNAT is, a stateful SNAT is created. I'll come to what does stateful mean. Basically the source IP of the container and the source port of the container is replaced with the host IP and the port and the traffic is, gets forwarded to the external port and the traffic goes out to the internet. Now when the response is coming back, you need to base, that's why we create a stateful NAT, so that when response is coming back, we need to reverse it. So we need to rewrite the host IP colon port to the container IP colon port. So that's why we create a stateful NAT there. And this is how uh, port to internet works. The next example is uh, uh, port to load balancing, basically the Q proxy flow, right? So let's say you have a, a load balancer created on this uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster and the bottom, bottom one shows the load balancer, right? So you have a whip colon port and you have a set of backend depths. Now the pod is trying to reach the service whip. So the packet reaches the port, port 3. Now in Windows what we do is, especially for the non-DSR flow, we the management port is the load balancer for us. So it's basically a, literally a mux for us and it's distributed. So every node has its own load balancer, right? So the traffic from the pod, it has to go to the, if it's, if it's hitting the service whip, it has to go to the management port. So what we do is we encap the packet to the management port and send it to the management port. In, on the management port, we decap the packet again and then apply this LBNAT rule. LBNAT rule is basically a rule where uh, given a set of dips, it selects a dip based on the uh, five tuples, like basically the source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, and protocol. It applies that hashing and then selects a dip. Once it has selected the dip, it rewrites the destination IP and the destination MAC and sends it to the corresponding dip. So this is how load balancing works in Windows. With this, I, I hope I gave you enough uh, information about the basics of Windows container networking and I would like to hand it over to Cindy so that she can walk through how to write the CNI plugin. Okay. So I, I hope this is very helpful, especially for the animation, right? Uh, so now let's imagine I have a Huawei Windows container cluster already. And in it, I have a Linux master node and then a bunch of Windows worker nodes. On the Linux and Windows nodes, uh, there will be corresponding flavors of Kubelet, Kubroxy, <coughs> Container Runtime installed. And then on top of it, there will be uh, Huawei's storage, monitoring, and network plugins installed. Specifically for network, the IPAM and CI plugin executables need to be built on, upon Huawei's software-defined network infrastructure. But before I'm able to write my own CI plugin, I'd like to have a bigger picture of how Kubernetes works with container runtime such as Docker and CI plugin to enable the network, container network. Uh, so first of all, Kubelet starts Docker shim, which is a gRPC server. In it, there are some uh, components and a bunch of API functions. And then secondly, Kubelet will call the Docker shim gRPC API run pod sandbox. Through this API call, Docker shim will call Docker engine, and then Docker engine will start a pause container. Sometimes people call it infrastructure container as well. 
As a result of this uh, container creation, a pod network namespace will be created. Then, Docker Shim will call Docker Engine to grab this pod network space. After that, Docker Shim will call its internal CNI plugin uh, manager. And then the CNI network plugin manager will run CNI plugin with network configuration file and environment variables. So internally, the CNI plugin will create, first will create a virtual network, and then create a, a network endpoint. Then plug in the network endpoint one side to the pass container and the other side to the virtual network. And then after that, apply the routing and then the host level policies. So after that, as per your pod spec, then the application containers can be started in this uh, pod. As you can see, CNI is the interface between CNI, uh, between container runtime and CNI plugin. And then CNI plugin is an uh, executable which can help you to create virtual network, container endpoint, uh, apply routings and policies. As what Dinesh has explained earlier, for Windows container, uh, there will be container virtual network switch, container network endpoint, like the virtual switch port, and then the policy mechanism of VFP. So at this point, let's take add endpoint as an example to show how you can run CI plugin manually and what's the internal flow. Here, I have two executables, the IPAM executable and the CNI plugin executable in the middle. And then I need to author my network configuration file as you can see, the, the, right bottom, uh, the right bottom block, uh, you can see the configuration file. Basically, I specify the name for my IPAM and CNI plugin, and then the subnet prefix. And then on the top uh, left, uh, right, sorry, you can see the environment variable. In it, I specify the add action, the pod network space, and then the path for where to find the executables for CNI plugin and IPAM. After that, once I run CNI plugin with the configuration file and the environment variables, first the CNI plugin will call the functions to create the virtual network. Then secondly, it will call IPAM to assign IP address to the pod based on the subnet prefix. Uh, thirdly, the CI plugin will create the endpoint based on the pod network space, the IP address, and then connect it uh, to the virtual network. So at this point, uh, I'm pretty much ready. Uh, I, I'm very clear about CNI plugin, how it works. I'm ready to write my CNI plugin. Here, I'd like to share you a bunch of APIs uh, as what Dinesh uh, explained earlier, the HCS shim exposed uh, by Microsoft. You can find it on GitHub. Uh, let's walk through all the APIs. So for network, there are APIs to create and delete the virtual network. Specifically for the, there is a data structure called HCN, HCN network config. In it, basically you specify, populate all the fields using your network configuration file. Then the create and delete uh, namespace. This is how Windows version of Docker called those two APIs to create the pod network space. And then two APIs for you to create and delete the network endpoint. Lastly, but not least, this is how the Windows version of Kube proxy to enable the Kubernetes service uh, on the Windows component, on, on the Windows node. 
Here in this slide, uh, I'm showing you a conceptual network topology for Huawei Windows Container Cluster. You can see three Windows nodes. And then on each node, we apply the L2 bridge network mode. And then across node, uh, we are using the L3 uh, routing table. Uh, one special thing I want to call out is on the each Windows node, we cr specially created a CBR0 endpoint and use it as the container network uh, default gateway. And also for the CBR0, we enabled the IP forwarding so that for the container network egress, uh, it will be routed to CBR0, then after that uh, forwarded to the host NIC. Uh, and then for the APIs I, I shared earlier, you can find it on, this, uh, on those two links. Next, uh, we'd like to give a quick demo of the Huawei Windows Container Service. This is the website for Huawei Cloud Container Engine. As you can see, Huawei is the first cloud provider in China supporting Windows Container Service. I have uh, two Windows clusters uh, built already. For the left one, as you can see, there are two nodes, two Windows worker nodes uh, in this cluster. Besides the, oh, actually this one. So there are two nodes. And then besides the web UI, you can also use the Kubecado to directly manage your machines. Before we drill down to detailed scenarios, I like to point out a bunch of tools which are really useful when you try to troubleshoot your network issues. Uh, the first one is the collect log. Uh, this would help you to collect run on your Windows host and collect all your container network settings. For example, like what Dinesh called out earlier, your, what kind of uh, virtual network you have, how many endpoints you created, what kind of uh, VFP policies you created and applied to the endpoints. And then these two commands, uh, start and stop packet capture, packet uh, commands, you can also run on your Windows node to collect all the container network tracings and later on you can uh, analyze and troubleshoot issues. So let's get to the, the master Linux master node and see what's going on for the, for the cluster. As you can see, I have two nodes on the machine and then I have a bunch of pods de deployed. Especially I want to uh, show you some of the parts. Keep in mind all the IPs. So, for example, like the 1.36 and 1.39 are on, hosted on one Windows node, and then the 0 0.10, 0 0.7 are on the other node. And then here I have all the the two Windows machines available, uh, and then I want to show you the the config file. So here you see the subnet, uh, pre subnet prefix, and then the type and IPAM type are the executable names for my cluster, CNI plugin. And then especially here are the, the, the NAT policies uh, Dinesh just called out earlier. You need to put an exception for all your uh, like a container seeder and then your host seeder to as an exception for the egress net and some other policies need to be applied as well. On this machine, I have the tool uh, available, uh, downloaded already. So, uh, so, okay. So we can run the Okay. 
post. Yeah. So I have the. Collect logs. So I have the. So I have the tool downloaded. This is the tool, and then you can run it, and then go to the folder. Then you can see a bunch of files uh, created. Those are the log files. And then later on, Dinesh is going to go through those files and explain in detail. After that, let me like uh, uh, run into the containers. Let me get to the container. Uh, so let's get to this container. And then let's first see the IP address uh, for this container. As you can see, it's the 1.139. One uh, How about like, uh, let me ping the pod on the same host, uh, but uh, it's the other pod. So as you can see, it, it can pod to pod communication is working. How about the other pod, like uh, the pod on the other machine? Uh, can I ping it? It's working as well. So for this one, it's pod through the, v the routing table and then to the other host. Then how about I want to go to the internet? I want to go to uh, Baidu. Uh, then uh, would it work? So as you can see, it's working as well. So on this container, inside the container, it, it can also go to the internet. And then uh, the other thing we want to try to try out is basically on my other machine, I have a real customer uh, IIS web server installed. How about I get, get to there and see what, whether it's working or not? So as you can see, that's working as well. So how about I, I disable the IIS on the other machine and see if, if it's working or not? That's You're inside the container. OK. So I'm in the, in, inside this 0 0.7 container already. Let me stop the website. OK, it stopped. And then let me get back to the other machine and see how it's going. So it's failing, right? And then uh, in order to troubleshoot, uh, I like to collect some tracings. You're inside the container. Oh, OK. Makes sense. Uh, do we have them? It's okay. You just say that. Okay, you it's okay. So let me get to the other window, uh, command window, and then I want to Start run the. <laughs> Start packet capture. Okay, I want to run the uh, tracing. Okay, and then see uh, whether. OK, and then I want to run the same command, OK? And then let's get to the other machine, uh, the remote machine, and do the same thing. And then once I collect the log, basically, Dinesh is going to walk through and explain what's going on there. OK. Uh, let me first uh, stop the tracing. Okay. So before I go swimming into the logs, I would like to just uh, show you guys the debugging flow. So basically, uh, in general, how to debug a container, Windows container networking uh, issues. So 
you basically have uh, so look at the kubelet and kubeproxy logs and make sure that uh, the configuration from the Kubernetes side is uh, propagated through kubelet and kubeproxy to the underlying system. And then look at the CNI spec and the CNI logs to make sure that the uh, configuration what Kubernetes and kubeproxy was telling is uh, communicated to CNI. <laughs> then using the collect log script, look at the HNS uh, state and make sure that all the policies are looking good in HNS side, which I'll be showing you now. And then look at the VFP state also to make sure that HNS has programmed the data plane and expected results are there and policies are there on the VFP side. And then eventually if control plane looks good, then go to the data plane and make sure that you can do a packet capture and then look at packet drops and see what has happened. Now in the scenario that Cindy has walked through, she had two hosts and on host one, she was trying to curl a uh, application that's running on another host. So what is the expected flow here, right? The packet should go to the, uh, come out of the container and it should go to the CBR0, which is the default gateway. And then on the CBR0, the TCP AP stack looks up the next hop for the route that is on the another host, right? And then it forwards the packet to the external host. Now the packet reaches the external host and then it goes to the container port and then it eventually is delivered to the TCP AP stack in, inside the container. And TCP AP stack is gonna uh, drop the packet because she did stop the website inside the other container. So basically the packet will be dropped with saying that there's no endpoints. Now let me quickly walk through the set of logs that we collected, right? So here is a network dump. So this network dump shows that she created an L2 bridge network and this is the JSON output of the L2 bridge network and it will show you the set of uh, IP addresses, prefixes and the MAC address pool and the state of the network, right? And then the endpoint.txt will show you the list of endpoints on this host. We have three uh, local endpoints and uh, one remote endpoint. The remote endpoint are used for Qproxy uh, when you are trying to apply a load balancer. And whatever the policy she applied on the uh, CNI config, you can see them here. So there's a set of exception list, outbound NAT, and the set of route policies. And here is the IP config output that is also collected part of the collect logs. You can see the set of compartments created for those two containers she was running on this host and their corresponding IP addresses. And here is the VFP policy that it, which is also collected by the collect log script. And you can see that this is the port. As I said earlier, VFP has individual policies per port, like container port has its own policies, management port and external port. So here is an example of a container port policy. You can see that there is an ACL endpoint layer and a bunch of ACL rules, right? And then you have the NAT layer. This is the NAT layer and the NAT layer has the bunch of groups and inside each uh, NAT layer you have the corresponding exceptions program. The same policies that were applied in HNS, HNS will be translated to VFP rules, right? So now let's take a look at the packet capture. So here is the set of packet capture that uh, uh, Cindy captured on host one and host two, right? So here is the packet that said that, okay, I'm trying to reach from uh, 1.39 and I'm going to 0 0.7 uh, packet, right? The, the container, right? So as you can see, the, the, the port that we are interested in is uh, port five. So whatever the policies I showed in VFP, all of those will be processed. So basically the packet will flow through the endpoint la ACL layer, the NAT layer, and then um, the customer route layer and everything, right? Eventually the packet gets forwarded from port five to port three, which is the CBR zero. So this is the statement that says that the packet was forwarded from port five to port three. Then on port three, the packet goes to the, uh, uh, basically the uh, TCP AP stack. And you can see that the TCP AP stack IP route lookup happens and looks for the next hop and then sends the packet to the other host. Now on the other host, you can see clearly that uh, the packet reached the container port and it was eventually dropped because the endpoint was not found. Um, so basically I would follow the same flow saying, okay, uh, look up the data plane only at, at the last resort, right? And first look at the config issues and then eventually go to the uh, data plane. I think we are already running out of time. Uh, so sorry for this condensed session. I hope you guys had a good information on Windows container networking. So any questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
H H C N and C N I. So H H hmm? Azure C N I. Okay. Oh. So both both of them are similar implementations. Azure CNI is a, like Azure CNI, Flannel, uh, Calico, all of the CNIs go through the same uh, HNS and VFP. So basically it's two different implementations, that's it. Uh, so. And also like the HCN is the kernel, like yeah. a host compute service, the Windows kernel provide. And Azure CNI is the Azure version of CNI plugin. Huawei has its own CNI plugin. So everybody can write their own and plug into Kubernetes. But they are all built upon a Windows kernel. Okay. Any other question? If no, uh, thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay.